Hey, what's up? I'm Guy. I'm John. It's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to this channel. We appreciate it if you like this video. Also, I have a podcast. Check it out in the description. We're proud to be presented by Tito's Handmade Vodka. Go make yourself a cocktail right now. We love Tito's and sodas. Crafted to be savored responsibly. I think the simplest way to put it, John, is Trey Lance looks ready for whatever is next. He hasn't gone live in a game yet. This was the first day of pads. But... If you walked into this competition, as you like to say, if, if my mom showed up or aliens came from the moon and you said, which one's the starting quarterback, she'd guess Trey Lance, or at least she wouldn't say, well, clearly it's number 10. Yeah, she would not say, or the alien would not say it's number 10. I, I'm not trying to overreact on this one. I get it was just one padded practice, but if you believe the hype from Saturday, which People like Matt Mayoka who have been going to these practices, you see he tweeted out the thing of Steve Mariucci in 2002 congratulating him on his baby. Yeah. He's been at these practices for 20-plus years, and he was raving about how great that practice was. I heard Greg Papa talking about it on my drive home. Greatest practice he's ever seen, John. <laughs> now, he, he's Saturday. a long period of time there was some, with that Oakland Raider team that was pretty ugly quarterback play. But it, you don't have to be Bill Walsh or Kyle Shanahan to realize – this guy's talent is in a different fucking universe as the other guy. And I'm not trying to overreact to one practice. I'm just building this in to, listen, I have had to reevaluate my take on Jimmy Garoppolo. This guy would be my starter week one, uh, unless it's a catastrophe of him not being able to read defenses against another team. Now, granted, he is playing against a big-time defense with big-time star players, and he just can do things physically that Jimmy – just can't like th th there's there's an element to this even if Jimmy was really good like even if he was just maxing out his ability which would probably be the twelfth best quarterback in the league right that Jimmy's just on point and just playing as well as he can somewhere ten to fourteen kind of that range would you agree there? I used to agree more with that because I want to address that though because yeah, I I'm just yeah my point is just Jimmy's playing is okay yeah maybe fifteen or whatever. Trey can just do things with his legs that Jimmy can't. That's just black and white, even if Jimmy's playing well, right? He just doesn't have that ability to run. But then you factor in the arm. Like, at, Jimmy just doesn't have a great arm. He doesn't have a bad arm, but I'd say it's league average. You know, it's just, it's fine, but it's not, Trey has a hose. And then we watch him make some of these throws. He's pretty accurate, right? It's Well, it's clear, I, it's hard to take, like, huge takeaways in practice with accuracy besides like splash plays. I think it's fair to say he's not an inaccurate thrower. Yeah. I, I would say what's the Was it Matt Damon's character in oceans 11 or oceans 13 or oceans 12, whichever where he's like, he puts on the fake nose and he's like, the nose plays like the arm plays like it. It's a, it's not just a rocket arm that the ball's flying all over the place. It's a very useful arm and he doesn't just use it for the deep ball. He uses it for tight window throws over the middle. He uses it for, a running back in the flat who can then get the football quicker and turn up the field or Kyle Juszczyk or whoever. Cause so it, it's because we were talking to Mayoko and you and my, I watched well before anyone heard of this guy, Kaepernick, his arm played strength wise, but it was a scattershot arm. Yeah. And right? this is why when we watched the Trey Lance tape months ago, what was my take on the Colin Kaepernick comp? It's not a good, it's comparison. not a good comp because yeah. this guy throws with touch and better accuracy than Colin ever did. And I, I, so to your question on what's Jimmy at his best, I said, I don't know, a month or two ago that I didn't think I, I couldn't expect that if Jimmy was at his best, that Trey Lance could beat him out. But a is Jimmy consistently at his best. This is why I said on Sunday, it's this is not just an injury issue for Garoppolo. This is also a performance issue. Early, early last year, we didn't get a lot of Garoppolo before he got hurt. But remember, when we did get Garoppolo before he was hurt, there was a question as to whether or not he was regressing. So, uh, you know, now we haven't got a, a live action yet. Like, we're going to get some preseason games, and that'll be a major determining factor. But Kyle Shanahan can say whatever he wants about it. It's not a competition. There's a reason that every coach values practice time the way they value their children. It means a lot to Because practice matters. Yeah. So whether you call it a competition or not, we're watching it happen. Like everything that happens on the field is a competition. Well, I, and I, I was thinking about this on the drive home because people will eventually come like Jimmy. Let's just say worst case scenario for Jimmy's career. Trey beats him out. They cut him or something right before the season. And people will be like, middle cop. You once said Jimmy was better than Derek Carr. Jimmy was better than this guy. Jimmy was here. 
At one point in time, I believe that. Players are like the stock market. They go up and they go down. This is not something that just, like, I, I just bought a, uh, a coffee table. I put that coffee table in my living room. It's a, just a black wood coffee table. It never fucking changes. Maybe I put different things, but it looks the same unless you nick it or break it. It's going to look the same. Players get better or they get worse. It's the famous line in football that I think Belichick started and everyone stole it. You either get better or you get worse. No one stays the same. Because the point is, if you're staying the same, you are getting worse. And I think it's fair to say that like that Jimmy, definitely that when he first showed up, but even the season, I guess it was uh, that he tears his ACL, then they go to the Super Bowl. He had some ups and downs. He had some really good moments, but he was never like a consistent player. Now his really good moments were really good. But I think looking back, it's not like he ever, like really good players. Let's think of some young guys right now in the league. Lamar Jackson, not even Mahomes, but like Josh Allen. Um, uh, Herbert last year, right? They strung together several, like eight straight good games, maybe bad plays in some of those games, but like every week you're like, this guy's a good player. That's not Jimmy, right? And you just kept hoping like he can figure it out, he can figure it out. And maybe it's just as simple as one, he just has limited physical abilities relative to like the guys I just listed and obviously Trey, right? He just physically not as talented as those guys. And really looking way back, he was a late second round pick. Right. I mean, it's not like he was once anointed as like a top 10 pick, some physical freak. He was really just more of a good football player. And listen, sounds like I'm shitting on him. He's still probably better than 10 starters. So there's 20 people in the world more talented than him. Right. When you and, and when I say talented, better playing quarterback yeah. is more that. Yeah, just better. But Trey Lance, the talent is one undeniable. And then two, the hard part about just. This scheme, historically, it takes guys a little bit longer. Whether you believed, you see the Peter King note that he had watched more iPad film than any guy of the 90-man His, his iPad had logged more time in the system, yeah. And then Kyle pushed back that he's like, anyone with kids know you can just press play and fall asleep. So it's a- like, Anybody that uh, <laughs> got through college knows there's there's ways around things. But high like, school. here's what AP I would say stats. back to Peter, who Not you and I have known for a long time. Might have been regular stats. I Someone gave Peter that nugget. Like Peter went King, out, yeah. Went yeah. out of their way to give him that nugget, as in there were people in that building, whether it was Kyle, might have been Welker, I don't know. Could have been John. That was an impressive thing for could them. Could have been Jed. Right? Very easily could be Jed. Probably yeah. is Jed. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but, but all of that is bullshit if it doesn't look like he studied when the when the, when the the When practice starts, it's translating. So whether he's cooking the books a little bit with the iPad or not, he looks fucking incredible. Exit to East (laughs) right nasty. Yeah, he does. And so we had read about it. We'd heard about it. We'd seen some clips about it over the weekend. I think the point of this, this particular conversation is we went and saw it today and it's real. This guy has a chance to start week one. I, my, my takeaway is after, just after a day, it's only August 3rd, I would start him week one. Now, I'm adamant that rookie quarterbacks, the faster they get in, the faster they learn, and the faster you build on some of their learning curves and mistakes. What I saw today, again, we're not be, trying to replace like Trey Lance is trying to beat out Matt Stafford, right? Or Trey Lance is trying to beat out Dak Prescott, which you could say in a couple years he'll be better. Or even like I'm sure when Mahomes with Alex, where Andy's like, I know for a fact I can win week one with Alex. I don't, you know, it was just, I know I'm a 10 win team. I, I, I'm watching Jimmy with this team. I think I ask you or someone on the sideline, do you think they would 100% be a lock if Jimmy Garoppolo is healthy the whole season, which is obviously a big question mark, and just started every game that they would win, go 10 and 7? Because my takeaway you, was, I don't, though I do think it's possible, but I would, I would be uneasy with many games. You did ask me that, and it would be uneasy. I do think they would win 10 with him. If he started they have a lot 17 of talent games. around him. Yeah. Yeah. And I just think he's good enough enough, even though he's not great often, that you could get enough there. But he didn't um, look very good th- today, I didn't think. Yeah, I just here's and you said this on the last podcast. It, like when you are when you're extremely skilled, particularly at the quarterback position, when nobody can hit you, practice is you can look good in practice, right? Jimmy Jimmy's thing is not what's he's he gonna do pocket, in a practice yeah. that's right? No. Um, so that's the first thing. Now, Trey he, Lance, he acts, if you're Jimmy, 
you should be begging, like, let me play a little more in the preseason games. Cause I, that's his chance to excel. Cause you're right. He's not the play of the day was made on a potentially sack that might not exist in a real game. It was right? the, it, you know what, John, it was the throw. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the throw that Trey Lance made today that yeah, should have been a sack was the throw that got everyone fired up in uh, workout season. When you're rolling to your left, you have to turn your body or th- kind of throw on the run as, as a right-handed to, as a right-handed quarterback. Yeah, and he and we were standing right where it kind of it was like a 45 50 yard throw would be my guess. It kind of went we were on by the reception, the Trent Shurfield reception. And it just whoop, Well, you're gorgeous. watching in the air and then you eyeball the receiver, you go this thing's going to hit 8 yards ahead of him. Good. You got to give the receiver a little credit, right? Yeah. I mean, that's a guy that might make the team. You and I were talking about him with Dickinson, like a lot of special teams experience last year with the Cardinals. And he made some plays today, actually. Um, Now, again, it's hard to know what all of that means. But see, I think what you said, I want to go back to something you said about how you would start him right now week one. But there, the question is also, okay, that's fair. We got to see him in these preseason games. But the question is also, will it get to the point where Kyle is willing to go there? And I think given what, Trey Lance can do with his legs and given Kyle's experience with Robert Griffin, some of this, a lot of this probably will be determined by how it looks in the preseason. But I do think there's a, I do think it's possible that Kyle gets to that conclusion as well at this point. Quick interruption to tell you to click on DraftKings in the description and use the promo code HAM. And if you want some meat, butcherbox.com slash ham down below. Free lobster tails and ribeyes. Well, there's two ways to look at, I, I think I heard... Uh, someone say as we were leaving the field that the ratio, I mean, I'm not taking notes on pass run ratios. I think it was 15 runs and nine passes for Trey Lance. And it was evident out there. They were doing designed runs for Trey Lance, which no one's tackling anyone to the ground. And really after a couple steps, most guys are pulling up. It looks freaking awesome. I mean, the, some of these holes are parting like the Red Sea and that guy's taking off. He's making moves. He's not... He, he has some wiggle to him. So when he gets in the open field, not only is he fast and huge, but he can move a little bit. Uh, when I mean move, like side to side, as we used to say in the scouting world, COD, change of direction. He is not just a straight line runner, which once upon a time, Kaepernick, who's by far, you know, Steve probably is the best runner in the history of the franchise, the modern day franchise post, you know, Montana. Kaepernick's the most explosive though, right? When he got open space, he was just, his play speed was elite. I don't know if Trey Lance's place like he will get caught by defenders. Like a fast defender will be able to catch him. Yeah. There are going to be times though, like Cam would run you over. Kaepernick would, if you didn't have an angle, would run by you. I think Trey could make a guy miss. And that th- there is an element. So I'm watching today, thinking, is Kyle just doing this because, worst case, he knows he's just going to use some of these plays throughout a game, or just seeing like, well, I know Trey's going to be able to throw the ball too if I can do this. Can I just have a game plan with this guy completely? Because he's got to be, and, and regardless what You're he, saying, if he's it, not quite ready as a passer, can I still play a whole football game and a whole season with what he's got? And even if you go in with that mindset, as he keeps making these passes, how do you not come to the conclusion, well, it's like, well, I can run inside zone with him, I can run outside zone with him keeping it, and he can make all these throws? And the more he does that, guess what? The, the easier it is to throw the football. I, you could argue that even if you wanted to cook the books for throwing for Jimmy, be like, you know, some of these practices aren't even real for him. We still are more confident than in a game. He'd just be more comfortable. The 10 to 15 times when Trey could just take off could get you seven, eight extra first downs. Like a third and five with Jimmy, he's just he has to throw for it. I think Trey, I don't see how once the fans see Trey on the field, unless he just completely looks different than he has the couple times you and I have been around the team, how it's not the overwhelming reaction from the outside is what are we doing? Well, but, but John, but that doesn't, I agree, but that doesn't matter. I don't see how, if he looks like this in games that Kyle doesn't think. 100%, 100%. But I could just, I just think coaches naturally just, they always try to poo poo things. I mean, it's August. I agree, but I don't, but like, but John, the Kyle McVay Gruden, these guys don't hold on to quarterbacks too long if they don't have to. Big picture, do you think it's safe to consistently run them between the guards? No. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's why I, I said this the other day. Like, 
if he is the starting quarterback, there will 1,000% guarantee save this market down. There will come a time when we have the conversation about, is he is he running too much? We're going to have that conversation because it's going to be effective. I'm cool with getting outside the tackles where he can just hit the ground. Inside the guards, and definitely just the tackle box, which if I had to guess, I saw at least five times a day. Like kind of running up the center's ass. Remember, he's... I, he, we saw that in I don't college. Like that play. That, I know that, he likes it. He does there's a, though. There's a lot of body. Well, he remember he liked that at North Dakota. That's State. what I'm saying. Yeah, he he's comfortable doing it. He's but he's a. There's a, a lot of clutter in there, guy. There's linebackers. There's fat defensive tackles that are strong. They can know, fall on I you. I know. I know. I know. I know. There's there's a great <laughs> defensive ends there's coming a, down. There's a phrase I like in basketball where someone's like an when they're just when they're automatic. You just say like if he's a bucket, like hey, he's just a bucket. Yeah. Like he's a four yards. Like if he's going to tuck the football, he's four yards. Well, you're right. The exercise we did where he, you pulled the plays and we were going over them. He ran up the middle a lot. I think he, and that's, I think Cam was always real. Most quarterbacks would want no part of that. Right. Cam naturally, I think felt confident because he's like, that motherfucker's not going to tackle he's me. Big. I think Trey kind of goes like, that guy ain't going to tackle me. But the reality is, even the little dudes. Remember, I, I what's his name? Uh, the little guy, forty-two that that Reggie drafted once upon a time. Uh, oh, Carl Joseph. Carl Joseph. Even the small guys in this league will put your sternum on the other side of your back. I mean, it's just the the but you get hit. I mean, Jimmy Ward, who, like you said at practice, looks a little smaller with one. He will hit your ass so hard coming 10 steps down at you, right? It's just the violence. It, it's why I have so much respect for running backs, but I don't like my quarterback taking that no. type of violence. Well, and like I think you said it during practice. Like, we don't know. Can he slide? <laughs> we'll find out. But slide's not an, even an option in that. No, it's not. Really but it is just part of what, you know, yeah. you'd can like to see a guy do. That is a legitimate question. <laughs> it is a legitimate question. I didn't see him slide. Remember Michael not Vick? They, Bobby Cox sent some people to try to help him out, and he couldn't do it? He like had the brain fart. Remember, he just couldn't. I can understand he, that. Anyone who's done sliding drills knows. 